Hello, so today I'm going to explain dimensional analysis, which is a fantastic way of determining whether equations are correct or not. So I'll start by sharing the screen. Go to the whiteboard. Okay, so imagine that you're given an equation like this. So the distance traveled is equal to the speed times the time taken plus one half times acceleration times the time taken. So is this equation correct or not? Well, you can check it by putting in the units. So for example, the units of distance are meters, units of speed are meters per second, units of time are seconds, there are no, no units of a half, of course, that's a dimensional quality, but quantity, but I'll put a half there. Units of acceleration are meters per second squared. Units of time squared are seconds squared. So immediately from this, we can see that seconds cancel there, so we get left with meters, which equals that. We get a half here, but we get the second squared cancelling with the second squared on the bottom. So we get a meter left. So the formula is dimensionally that meters equals meters plus a half times meters. So the units are the same in all the terms, and so we can say that this equation is correct. Okay, now imagine that we wanted to derive an equation that we don't know from first principles, from dimensional analysis. Well, it's possible to do that. So imagine the Rindle horizon. So imagine you've got an object here which is accelerating in this direction. Now information from a certain distance behind it will never catch up with it. So there's a horizon here behind it, like that. Now we'd like to know what the distance is here. So I'm going to call this D. And I'm going to imagine that this distance is some function of the speed of a light, because this is the information bearing phenomenon, light, and the acceleration of this object. But I don't know exactly what the function is, but I'm going to derive it using dimensional analysis. So the units of distance are meters, and we've got some function of speed and acceleration here, but we don't know what it is, but we can work it out. So first of all, in brackets, I'm going to put the units of the speed in meters per second. And I'm going to raise it to the exponent alpha. And then also in brackets, multiplying this, I'm going to put the units of acceleration yeah, and raise it to the exponent eta. So the equation essentially is whatever we find alpha and beta to be to make both sides of these dimensionally consistent. So you can do this by trial and error or just by looking at it but if you want to do it algebraically you can do that. You can look at the exponents of the dimension of meters for example. So you can write here the exponent of meters on this side is one. That's going to equal the exponent on this side uh, meters are raised to the power alpha. So we've got an alpha here. And here, the exponent, there's another exponent of beta there. And then if you look at seconds, well, there aren't any on that side, so we can put a zero in, equals, on this side, we've got one over seconds, so that's alpha to the minus one, so it's minus alpha. And here we've got one over seconds squared, so we've got minus two beta there. So now if we add these two formulae, we get an equation below. So for example, if we have one minus zero, sorry, one plus zero, we get one equals, if we add these two, they disappear conveniently, so we get zero. And if we add these two, we get minus beta. So this means that beta is equal to minus one 
And therefore from this equation, we can say that alpha is two. So when you take minus one over to the other side, it adds one to that one, so alpha is two. So straight away, we can write down the dimensional formula. So this brand new formula is gonna be meters per second all to the power two. And then this one is gonna be to the power minus one. And when you have a negative exponent, you upend the fraction. So we've got seconds squared on the top and we've got a meter below. So straight away, we can see that second squared in the bottom here is gonna cancel with that. We're gonna get rid of one meter experiment there. That'll cancel with that one. So we've got meters equal meters. That's correct. So what this means is that the formula for the Lindler horizon is the velocity times alpha, which is squared, that's c squared, divided by the acceleration, which is the exponent of that one, minus one. So the Lindler horizon, the distance to it is c squared over the acceleration. Okay, I'll stop sharing the screen. And thank you for listening. Till next time.